Good day, guys. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Wealthwise Show. I'm your host, the Wise Investor, and join me as we navigate the world of personal finance and equip you with the knowledge and tools to make wise financial decisions. Now, let's dive into today's episode of the Wealthwise. Welcome to another episode, guys. I'm your host, the Wise Investor, as you heard in the intro. Back again for another episode of the Wealthwise Show. And today, I wanted to, you know, the, this is going to be the last couple of episodes this year. This is going to be this one, which is going to be episode uh, 34. And then the next week's episode, episode 35. And that's it for the year. And then we're going on to a new year. Um, so, uh, I want to get some, of course, get some housekeeping out of the way. Hey, this is financial education. Uh, this is not meant to be taken as personal finance advice. Uh, so please use this information as such. Um, but uh, guys, next year is going to be really big for at least the show because I decided that I'm going to do videos. Um, so uh, it's something that I've already talked about um, on the show and I've been playing around with it. I tried it out once. It wasn't that great. Um, but I think I, I finally found my footing with the video aspect of the show. Uh, so I definitely am going to be doing videos. I've already pre-recorded at least like six episodes. And the reason being recording videos is a little bit different from doing the audio only. Uh, because with the audio, I can just sit at my computer. You know, I can be in my robe. I can, you know, be sipping on some coffee. I can pause it and, you know, whatnot. And, you know, I could just get up in the morning, just turn on my computer and start recording. But with video, there's a lot more production that has to be done. And that's why I decided I'm also going to, you know, well, I've been pre-recording shows for ever, you know, probably since the beginning. Um, but I'm going to continue to pre-record shows. But this time, pre-record shows way in advance um, because this is not really a topical show where I'm like, hey, this week's topics is X, Y, and Z. This is more of a just educational hey this is what this means what this is what that means and so therefore you know I, I feel like i don't need to you know record the same week and that's going to help me out because my schedule is going to get way busier next year i'm working on a lot of powerful things um and you know it would be nice to continue to do this show and give you guys you know the same quality or even better quality if i can uh, and you know, that's what I'm going to do. So YouTube, go follow us on the Wealthwise show on youtube.com like comment, subscribe, you know, click the bell, you know, um, follow us on Instagram at the Wealthwise show. And of course you can still listen to the audio because just because I'm doing videos doesn't mean it won't be an audio version on the podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple music, and things like that. It basically just means that, you know, Hey, if you want to see my face, I don't know, that's a little weird. You can <laughs> go to the YouTube and see my face. Um, but it'd be a little more interactive, I guess. So with that being said, the last two episodes of the year, we're going to close out with, you know, talking about the other indexes. So we talked about uh, the S&P 500. We talked about the NASDAQ. And this week, we're going to talk about the Dow. And next week, we're going to talk about the Russell. And so this week... We we're talking about the Dow Jones Industrial Average and what is that? So just like the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, it is a stock market index. And we already discussed what indexes are and all that stuff. But this particular index tracks 30, keep in mind, 30 large publicly owned blue chip companies that are trading on the New York Stock Exchange. And I, and I read that directly from Investopedia, by the way. And so understand guys, a lot of this information is coming from Investopedia. I'm just making it digestible in audio and video format. Uh, with, you know, some sprinkles of my own personal opinions. Um, so that is what the Dow Jones is. You know, it was, it, it was created in 1896. And the owners or the creators of the Dow Jones was Charles Dow and Edward Jones. See that? Uh, I know a lot of people might know who Edward Jones is. Um, so 
the the Dow is only consisting of 30 companies. So unlike the SP 500, which is like you know hundreds of companies, you know the Nasdaq, uh, 100 companies are you know and sometimes more, or the Russell where it's like you know thousand or two thousand companies in a particular index. You know the Dow only tracks 30, and it's 30 of the biggest companies. So usually the Dow was is more geared to industrial companies. And that's where the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the reason being because because since it was invented in nine or not nineteen uh, in eighteen ninety six, a lot of America at the time was industrial driven. The technology boom really didn't get taken off until like the nineties, I would say, like late eighties, you know, in nineties. So and 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 that's 1980s and <laughs> 1990 So literally almost a hundred years later after the Dow Jones was created, that's when technology really started to take off. So that's why, you know, mo- majority of the companies that are in there, yes, it's the largest companies, but you're still gonna find a lot of large companies that are geared towards, you know, industrial type um industries. And so that being said, you know, uh, a little history on the Dow Jones, you know, it was created because they wanted to keep track of the U.S. economy. They wanted to keep track of the health of, you know, America at the time. And so that's where it was like, okay, well, how are we going to keep track of the health of America? And keep in mind, this is in the 18s, 1896. Um, How are we going to keep track if, you know, we don't know that the companies that are producing, you know, pretty much helping us produce GDP and things like that, how they're doing. And so why not put them all, you know, instead of going researching all these 30 companies and you can see how, you know, back in the 18 to versus, you know, 2000s, you know, 30 companies was a lot back then to keep track of. But um, keeping track of the 30, those 30 companies made it easier for Okay, making the basically the markets become a leading indicator. So that is one of the, I would say, the important things of the Dow Jones. And even though the Dow Jones don't get a lot of love from a lot of investors like it used to, because it's only 30 companies, it's still one of the best indexes in the world. So don't get it twisted. It might be old, you know, it might be, you know, sometimes behind the times, sometimes behind the times um, doesn't mean it's not a index that should be overlooked Uh, because, you know, me personally, uh, some of the companies in the Dow are extremely good companies, solid companies. Um, just to name a few, by the way, this is not endorsing these companies or endorsing the Dow to invest in it. Um, and of course, my opinions are, are not shared by Simplicity Wealth. They're my opinions only. Uh, so don't don't get it twisted. Um, but some of the companies that are in the Dow 30, uh, you're going to have your 3M. Um, so 3M, you know, is... A, I'm pretty sure everyone knows what 3M is. You've seen the products in the stores, you've seen the tape, you've seen, you know, all that stuff. Uh, so, you know, I would say that's industrial. You know, you got American Express. Now, American Express is more on the financial side, but that still is a financial institution that pretty much most Americans use, especially businesses and high net worth individuals. So, of course, you're going to want, you know, to be tracking that. Then you have Apple. You know, Apple, of course, is a tech company, uh, not really industrious, like with a traditional industrial, uh, but they still are a heartbeat of America when it comes down to technology. Like people turn to Apple for a lot of problem solving a lot of times, you know, Apple and Microsoft. Like, don't get it twisted. If you think that these uh, companies are only making cell phones for the consumers, then trust me, they're doing a lot of stuff for the government and the U.S. as a whole as well. And then, of course, you got Boeing. Boeing is a, another industrial company. You know, if for those who you don't know who Boeing, 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 <laughs> uh, if for those of you who don't know who Boeing is, 
they're an aerospace company. And so, you know, they manufacture commercial jetliners and defensive and space and security systems. You know, that's verbatim what uh, their bio says. So they airplanes, you know, they have a lot of stuff working with the military, space, all that stuff. So, yes, they can be seen as a company that would show if America is weakening or not especially when it comes down to the defense aspects of their company. Uh, you got Cali- Cali- I'm not going to be able to say that word. Caterpillar. See, I got to say it slow. I got a speech impediment. You got to excuse me. Um, but Caterpillar, Cat, um, is another industrial company. If you don't know what Cat is, then think of all the earth movers, the diggers, the, you know, the construction workers that you see tearing up the roads on the side when you're trying to get home at five o'clock. Those tools and equipment, those big machineries that you see, nine out of ten times, they're going to be a, a, a cat machine or a caterpillar machine. Um, so uh, you got Chevron. Uh, you know, if you don't know what Chevron is, I guess you don't own the gas car. Uh, then you got Cisco. Uh, Cisco, I can understand why people might not know 100% of Cisco, uh, but think of them as a tech or a company that pretty much is think of it like Salesforce. You know, they design, manufacture, uh, and sell internet protocol-based network products um, and things like that. Um, so I know I said Salesforce, but I was saying like think of them as a company that produces enterprise stuff essentially uh, so you know they do routers um you know i'm pretty sure if you you've seen a cisco product i'm pretty sure we all have a cisco product in our home uh, or at least have one but typically uh, on the commercial side they're really um that's really one of their main bread and butters is the enterprise stuff uh, and when i say enterprise for those of you who don't know what that means um is basically big corporations. Um, so uh, they got Coca-Cola. You know, of course, Coca-Cola is uh, more of a value staple. Uh, so I would keep going down. I, it's 30 companies. Why not keep going down? I got nothing else to do. It's the end of the year. So you got Goldman Sachs, which is another financial institution. Um, you got Home Depot, which is another consumer um, I don't think it's a consumer staple, more consumer discretionary. Uh, you got Honeywell. Um, uh, you got I am or not I am IBM. You got Intel, Johnson and Johnson, J.P. Morgan, McDonald's, um, Microsoft, Nike. You know Procter and Gamble, Salesforce, uh, the Travelers Company, United Health, Verizon, Visa. Walgreens, Walmart, excuse me, and uh, Disney. And so these list of third companies, it may be like, or may sound like, well, a lot of them are not industrious. Like, you know, I don't see them like, I understand cap because, you know, you're moving stuff, you oil, I get it, oil man. But if you look at America then and look at America now, these are the new industries that pretty much you know, have been growing the GDP, you know, so you might look at that. This is a healthy balance between consumer technology, industrial finance, uh, real estate, um, things like that, um, health, health care. So they got a few, like I would say a few, um, a few companies that, can produce some really solid returns and these are some of the largest companies in america so that the dow that is one of the reasons why they might not have the glamorous stuff like tesla they might not have the glamorous stuff of certain small cap cap companies and you know mid cap and things like that but you can't deny that these particular companies are solid very solid companies that you know, if if multiple of them fail, America will be in very big trouble. Like just Apple and Microsoft. If Apple and Microsoft failed tomorrow, catastrophic. So 
that is why, you know, I feel like the Dow, yeah, it might get overlooked because it is boring. I'm not going to lie. It is boring. It doesn't have a lot of these companies are not going to do no crazy price movements. I would say 99% of these companies like Apple and Microsoft might do some crazy price moves on earnings or something like that. But majority of these companies, and maybe Intel too, but those are tech companies and most tech companies are considered growth. So you can see why, you know, they would do those uh, crazy price swings. But majority of these companies are pretty solid, stable growth, uh, increasing dividends and things like that. So these are, I would say, the mature uh, index. Um, and you can see it's been working over the last, you know, few, uh, I want to say over a hundred and some years. And so the Dow is a, a index that should be respected. I, I know a lot of people. And the reason I say that, because a lot of people, you know, they track the S and P that's the benchmark, the benchmark for all of us in the financial industry is typically going to be the S and P. Um, but you know, as an investor, just because we track the S and P doesn't mean you have to. So that's why it's important to know each index and what they represent, what they do, what they consist of, because you know, you might be like, you know what? I think 30 companies might just be enough. You know, yes, there's, uh, limitations because like I said, the S P has 500 of the best companies in the world. And so, uh, I can definitely see why, you know, Hey, the S P 500 is more attractive, but some investors might just want 30 particular, like, let's say, uh, you're trying to replicate the index. I, I should probably preference that. So one of the strategies that a lot of investors and advisors and money managers use is they will replicate index. So let's say um, I want to replicate the S&P 500. So I'm just going to buy what the S&P 500 has. But as an individual investor, like someone who's not professional, who don't do this for a living, you might 500. That's a lot. So 30 might be enough for you. 30 might be like, you know what? I can, I can live with 30 and you're still going to get the exposures to the different sectors and things like that. So I'm saying all that to say is just because the S P 500 is, or the S P 500 and the NASDAQ is a, um, a great asset, but don't overlook the Dow. If it fits your retirement, if it fits your investment plan, if it fits your, you know, what you view that is going to be beneficial for you, of course, talk it over with a financial professional. But if it fits you, you know, why shy away from it? And like I said, a lot of these companies, you know, if you go through the list of the company that's in the Dow, you'll say, like, I know every last one of these companies. I, I shop there. I, you know, I've been I know them since I was a kid. And that right there, you know, you know, the company. Versus companies that you never heard of that you're buying. And you're like, okay, I don't know what this company does, but it's in the S&P 500. So I'm going to buy it anyways. So at least you have a familiar, you're familiar with the companies in the Dow. That way, when you do purchase um, shares of a particular company that may be in the Dow, you can say, well, I know this company. I know JP Morgan Chase. I bank with them. I know their fees. I know their customer service. I've been all around the country with different branches. You know, they all treat me like family, X, Y, and Z. Oh, I know uh, Johnson & Johnson. I know Nike. You know, my kids love Nike. I wear Nike products. They're, they're solid. You know, they're high quality, X, Y, and Z. So that is why I feel like, you know, the Dow is a great um, index that should be looked at in portfolio planning. Um, so that being said, just a little recap, the Dow is one of the oldest indexes, uh, in the world. Uh, they consist of, they consist of, it consists of, uh, 30, uh, stocks and usually going to be large blue chip stocks, which is, you know, companies that are billions and billions of dollars strong. Um, they're usually the Dow is synonymous with, you know, Amer the American stock market. And then because of that, it tracks the health of America. So if the Dow's doing terrible, 
then people are going to assume America is doing terrible. So it is, even though it's not always, you know, an exact accurate reflection of the broader stock market, it still it still has some meaning. Uh, it, the index itself is price weighted. And so it, it's not uh, equal weighted or, you know, um, things like that. It's price weighted. And, you know, usually they have people in there that rebalances. And I'm pretty sure we I've talked about what rebalance was. And I talked about what the price weight and all that stuff was. So if you don't know what that is, the previous episodes have that information. Um, but the Dow, it can be a great investment vehicle if, you know, it fits your investment plan. Um, you know, it has some of the large caps, um, you know, and I think, you know, in 19, I keep saying 19 because it's hard for me to say 18, uh, 1896. Uh, Charles Dow and Edward Jones, they, you know, created one of the best indexes um, in the world. And they people still use it today. So uh, with that being said, the next episode is going to be talking about uh, the Russell. Uh, and what is the Russell? The Russell, uh, the Russell 2000. And I, I know that's an index that a lot of people don't know about. You know, they hear about the big three, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ. But there is another index that investors should look at, and that is the Russell 2000. And I'm going to talk about next week why it's important to not discount the Russell 2000 like people do the Dow, but also why the Russell 2000 doesn't get as much shine and why wall street the people on wall street especially um you know big time accredited investors why they love the russell 2000 and why they don't want you to know much about it so tune in next week um it's going to be a great episode and i appreciate you guys rocking with me this whole the rest of this year Uh, i know we started in may uh, so it's really you know half a year uh that you guys stuck with me I appreciate it. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And next year, like I said, we're going to be doing videos. So that's exciting. Um, you know, typically I'm a little nervous about being on video. That's why it took me so long. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty awkward. Uh, but, you know, I feel like it will be something to add on to the show because I do want to bring on guests eventually. Uh, I may even do a co-host. I don't know. Um, you know, I think these last few months has been more of foot foot finding and fact finding and just learning and research. Uh, so next year, I think it's going to be the official official launch of the West Wall of the West Wall, <laughs> the WFY show. Um, so what I mean by official, I mean like you know that's going to be probably the format that's going to be forever. So this format is going to be constantly changing. Uh, we're going to see how the videos do and then, you know, I might bring in a co-host or two, uh, I might bring in some guests or two. And so we'll see how that works. Uh, so like I said, go to the YouTube channel, the Wealth Wise show, subscribe, click the bell, you know, like comment, you know, you can rewatch the old episodes cause that's on YouTube, you know, follow me on Instagram at the Wealth Wise show. And yeah, guys, I'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Oh, wait. I was supposed to say my outro. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Uh, so, uh, thank you for rocking with me. And until next time, guys, stay well, flies. services are provided by Simplicity Solutions, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Any insurance, consulting, and education services offered through the Web Live Show. The Web
Fire Show. <laughs>